And we're back with some more Medieval Dynasty. And we may have been drinking slightly again. I've decided that this forest needs to go. It's uh, getting in the way. Plus, we could we could use some more logs. So excuse me while I do a little bit of light deforestation right here. It took a while. But it's beautiful now. I gotta take out all the tree stumps. But that was fun. Took a little time. Basically, I'm killing time right now until all the women get finished with motherhood. Uh, right now on the management section, we've got one, two, three, four kids, which means we've got four mothers who are taking care of them. We've got another four who are expecting, which will also put us even further in the hole. So right now we've even got four cooks, but we filled out a bunch of ranks here and there. We now have uh, another excavation shed so we can get our hands on stone so I don't have to keep going to get it so we can build more housing for all the people we've hired. We've hired six more people, two of them for the excavation shed, uh, two for an additional woodshed. We needed another woodshed just so we could get it, well, more lumber so we could build more housing. Next time, I, I, if I ever play this again, woodsheds and excavation sheds, lots of them at the start to make sure you have enough wood and stone that you don't have to go and get it. They get it for you. Much, much, much more convenient. Oh, and for the mine as well, we hired an extra two people to fill out the mine. Why not? Oh, actually, I hired someone as well for the smithy. So now we've got two people working in the smithy instead of the one. And we hired someone else to run one of the resource stalls, did we? Wait, no, the hen house. That was it. It was the hen house. So we just have lots of people now. We're at 44 workers in a population of 54. It's kind of stupid. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was going to finish that quest for the missus. Then, there's a whole bunch of trees over there that really need to get got. Just look at them. Look at them. Smug little gits. One of the things I've been doing to speed up time is just to sleep. What we're, we're trying to do here is get past all of the, well, all, all of the young children stage so that we've actually got a fully functional village. Oh, not foggy again. Stop being foggy. Oh, and I should really take care of one of those quests. There is something I haven't been looking at here, and it is the king. Ah, yes, here we go. We've got Ludimir first. Ludimir one, the mad. Uh, we can potentially get rid of him. The problem is you can do quests for this guy. If you do successful quests for him, if it's a good king, you get decreased taxes and your citizens are happier. However, if it's a bad king, you get decreased taxes and your citizens are unhappy. So doing good quests for him, it seems, is, is not a thing you should do. However, what they've changed now is that if you try to do a quest for him and fail, this increases the likelihood that the Mad King will die. Or if you have any bad kings, you can fail their quests, which will increase your taxes. We don't really care about that. But that means we should have a chance to get rid of Ludimir the Mad every so often. So I'm just going to pop over to this place, uh, meet the Herald, and uh, grab whatever quest they have and then fail it by just not doing it. I've never tried these before, so let's see what this is about. How old is the king? Do you know by any chance to know what the king's opinion of me is? What does the king want? Hey, what does the king want? King needs more money for the war effort, but doesn't want to raise taxes, so instead he calls for one-time donations from each of his villages. Uh, we have other expenses right now, so, uh, sod off and die. Yeah, we're just gonna fail whatever that one is, um... Wait, if we accept it, what happens? Mm, I think a quick save is in order. Let's see, I'll get the money. Wonderful, I'll wait for your delivery. If you don't want to carry everything here, remember that you can leave it in your storage, provided that you have one, and tell me about it, and I will, ha I will have it collected later. All right, thank you. Hmm. Deliver 2,000 coins. No, no, no. And this is why we quick save. You get 420 din dynasty repetition. That's actually not that bad. But no, 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 we're not helping a Mad King. This time round, we simply accept the quest. Yeah, yeah, I'll get you the money. And then we just don't do it. That should mean it's more likely that that king will die off and we can find a new one. All right, let's go, uh, let's go home. We have some trees to chop. I really do feel like I spend a lot of time building houses. However, I think, I think we're done. I got three extra houses just to cover any uh, additional contingencies that crop up. This entire area has been strip mined of trees. Which is good. Can we pave over this with roads? Uh, that might be an idea. One second, actually. Yes, we can make a road. This is just a gravel one, and it gets rid of all of the dirt. It gets rid of all of the tree branches. It gets rid of everything. We can, we can make ourselves a giant road straight. Like, I've got a, a waypoint set up ahead for the closest town. We could just make ourselves a road straight there, cutting straight through the forest. Yeah. 
let's do give that a go. I'm pretty sure I've got some booze on me and I've got an axe ready to go. Ah, plum wine. Let's go to town. Oh, I should probably be more careful about this. I find that doing this in third person mode is actually a little bit less likely to get crushed by trees. Which reminds me I should quick save this before I start this. Otherwise my dynasty will end a little bit early. Now that looks an awful lot better. That looks like a proper road system. So there's our village, and there's the other village over there that we can see in the distance. Uh, the only problem I see is that forest is just a little bit too close to us. Um, I think I got some more wine around here somewhere. It's hard to tell with the fog, but it does look better. Downside is, though, I left those trees that were close to the water. Everything on the opposite side of the road I left, and I just... I don't like it. I, I want those trees to be gone. Now, doesn't that look so much nicer? We, we can see our little warehouse storage area, food storage, and then the little village over there. And then we can see all the way across the water. Now that all those filthy trees aren't in the way. And all the way back here as well. This is perfect. Now, I had left those trees on the shoreline there just, but I think I prefer it without them. It just looks nicer. Uh Unfortunately, I still got a little bit more trees to go, I think. No, oh, wait, yeah, management-wise. Sorry, I should probably get back to... <laughs> we're up to a lot of mothers right now. It's really messing with our plans. We kind of knew this was going to happen. That's why I'm spending most of my time just chopping trees. We've got six mothers, six active mothers. Though the missus is back on duty. Where is she? Ah, there we go. Wife is actually back up and running, and we've got her. We've turned her into a hunter for now, though we probably should stick her back into production or something. The whole hunting thing, we're getting some meat in and salting it, and salted meat is feeding everyone, and then we're selling all of the food we're cooking. Oh, no, sorry, not the food. All of the flatbread is being sold, and all of the villagers are living on salted meat, namely because we have loads of salt lying around from all of my mining expeditions, and you can do it quite efficiently, it seems. For example, here is our hunting lodge with three people in it. They're pulling in 52 meat a day, and they're turning most of it into salted meat. Well, they're turning all of that into salted meat plus some reserves. I had a bunch of meat lying around the place. And when you salt that meat, even if it's just about to go off, it becomes 100% fresh again and then slowly goes down. And because it's salted, it takes forever to go off. We have a lot of salted meat lying around the place now. Hmm. Wonder how much tech this is getting. You know what? Doesn't matter. Technology-wise, our building technology is off the scale, namely because we've been doing nothing but chopping trees, and each one of those gives us one tech point. Or is it two? Whatever. We're getting a lot of tech from chopping trees down. Reduction technology is actually doing quite well, despite the fact that we only have four of five cooks on, because our cooks are pretty, they're pretty good right now. In fact, if we sort this by production, we have three level seven cooks and a level six. Uh, this craftsman here is about to turn seven and seven, and then we'll cycle them in and cycle, well, we'll cycle one of them in, and you know, they're all getting up there, basically. In fact, I think, uh, I think we might actually be cooking the 300 flatbread necessary, even with just four cooks right now. Production-wise, that's a, nope, 127 there, and 136 there. So that's 260. They're per churning out 260 flatbread. That's 40 shy of the amount we need. Hmm. Maybe my numbers were off, or maybe they're not happy enough. You know what? Doesn't matter. Soon we'll have more people back. And more people, more cooks, more flatbread. But, um... Yeah, I got some trees to take care of. This game really does look beautiful at times. That sunshine, a little bit of light fog, nice open plains. I just gotta chop down a few more trees that are getting in the way of this view. You know, one of the bonuses of this, it's going to make it much easier to shoot deer. There's just no place for them to hide. I wonder if they'll despawn once we get rid of all the trees. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Anyway, I'm going to go home and take a nap for the day. So while all of our people go on maternity leave, it's up to us to bring in the crops, plow them, harvest them, fertilize them, do all of that stuff. We are... Oh, we're hurt, hurting pretty bad right now. We have eight. Yeah, I want to say we have eight kids going, which means we have eight mothers going. The maternity leave in medieval times was just brutal. However, we've only got four more babies on the way. As far as I can see, this this is the baby symbol, right? We only ever get four. I think they've limited it so you won't have so much of a baby explosion. Otherwise, I can imagine pretty much half our village being out now with pregnancy. But... We'll be fine. We're getting through it. The only problem is right now, farmer-wise, we're down to two. Half of our farmers are gone, and one of the remaining farmers is 
also, yeah, very pregnant. So that means she's going to go next season as well. Which means it's pretty much just us doing this entire job of harvesting everything. I mean, we, we need this stuff so that we can keep making all of the flour so that we can keep making all of the technology. How are we looking on that front? Got to be close, right? 7,600 tech. We're actually doing pretty close. We're, we're almost to the goal. The goal, of course, being to get a tavern. Hey, I just want a drink, man. Well, okay, we've been buying lots of them, but we want to make our own drink. We want to start our own little microbrewery. That's, you know, the dream, right? Oh, and uh, full disclosure, a while back there, I turned on infinite uh, storage. As in, my inventory can now hold an infinite amount of kilos. It was getting too much of a pain in the butt, bringing all those logs back to storage. I, I kept making closer storages, getting in the donkey, and I'm like, you know what? Nope, I'm just going to allow myself to carry everything I want. It just makes it more convenient. You can carry all the tools you need on you, and you don't have to keep switching back and forth. There is a lot of busy work in this game getting this far. I regret nothing. Now, I haven't been slacking off on this road here. I, I kind of like the road, and I think I want to expand it. I want a, I want a sort of a highway. But, you know, it's made of gravel, so not really much we can do on that front. But we can just keep making it wider. So every time I have to run to the village or go that direction for a quest or something, I tend to just go right about... Let's put that about there. Ah, uh, boom. Gets rid of all of that nasty greenery. And uh, then we just go on the opposite side and do the same thing. This thing's turning out pretty nice. Oh, I haven't finished with the trees yet. I mean, it's just ran out of time for the day. Had to do some farming. There's other stuff, but... I'll get around to them until uh, until it gets to the point where there's no trees left visible from here. Once all of those trees are gone, well, okay, up as far as the village. Yeah, 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 I think up as far as the village should be good enough. Things have been progressing, let's just say. We have, uh, how many now? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So two of the kids actually aged up to two years of age means the mothers are back in the workforce. We've got a couple of them back in. One farmer and one excavator, I think, or someone who digs out, yeah, limestone. Oh, and I've uh, assigned a limestone out. But more importantly, we are churning stuff out. Like, we have six cooks, all of which are level seven. Every single one of these is level seven cooks. Those level seven cooks are producing 137 flatbread, which is a lot. That works out as... 411 flatbread a day at 0 0.6 technology, which is all we really cared about anyway. That's 246 tech a day in production. And we're at 9,000 production, which means in about four more days and change, we will finally have caught up with production technology. Just four more days. Let me give you a quick tour of what we've been up to in the meantime. Uh, the village is actually pretty big. We have a lot of stuff going on. There's houses, there's the kitchens, I can actually demolish a couple of those. We added in, oh, what is it, a few more kitchens back here. We added in, oh god, there's more storage over here. We've added in another smithy, we've added in another log cutting place. Uh, I can't remember what that is. What are you? Oh, excavation place. But a road, a road has been expanded. It is, uh, it's glorious. If you want to take a road from here to, oh, one second. Forgot to have our daily cherry juice. Keeps us nice and sprinty. Anyway, this road extends all the way from our village all the way to the next village. I left the uh, the edge of it down there, as in the bit... There's a, a road, that a natural road that goes there. I left everything beyond that edge of that natural road because, well, why not? Let's get up to the top here. Now, these two were built to store all of the wood that went into, well, when we were demolishing this entire area. And we managed to get rid of most of the trees you can see from here. Not all of them. There's some way up there I haven't got around to yet, but yeah, we did good progress. I've got, I've still got four days to take care of you lot. And as you can see, it's uh, just beautiful, actually. The map does a pretty good job of rendering it in. You can see it on the map here. The map actually shows you quite nicely. Unfortunately, we couldn't fill in that spot. There's currently a wagon that appeared there. Well, that should be gone next season. We can pave over it then. But done. We have actually built a full-on, I don't know what you'd call that. It almost looks a bit like an airport runway. But yeah, that worked out quite nicely. It looks perfect. And it makes hunting things much easier if they ever spawn here. But I don't think they do. I think we've killed all the spawn points by placing over them. In fact, we can check. Ah. Yeah. We destroyed the, the spawn points. Oh, well. It is what it is. Uh, I'm going to go back to maybe getting rid of those trees over there. Oh, ooh, ooh. Dear, perfect. And the thing is, without any place, without any trees to hide behind, you can just line up your shot. First person view is much easier for this. Line up your shot, and if you get them in one in the head, you know they're dead. Uh, how are you doing over there, buddy? 
This I've never had it this easy to hunt deer. Oh, just under your chin. Never mind. I always have a little I always have a little ritual before I go to sleep at night. Oop. I think that's our kid, is it? Yeah, that's well. Um, I should talk to him at some point. One, we go back to the wash tub and we grab a bath, because usually we're, you know, we've been working hard all day long, chopping down trees. And also we've been drinking an awful lot of plum wine to chop down said trees. And... oh. Yeah, off you go, kiddo. Yeah, and then we go to bed early, because we don't want it. we want to skip the seasons as much as possible, because that means our people are working at making flatbread, and that flatbread... ooh! During the night, there was a terrifying howl heard in every corner of our village. No one, says, no one has felt safe since. Hopefully the animals won't come any closer to the village. Uh, hide under the bed. No restrictions. Comfort the people. Requires a diplomacy skill of 0 to 5. Um, that seems pretty handy. Yeah, well, we'll go and comfort the people. All villagers got plus 5 mood. Talking to the villagers led you to assure them that it was just a harmless animal and have nothing to worry about. Also, we have killed God knows how many of those wolves. All right. All right. Ah, we failed at quest, the business of war. Now, what's our estimated tax bill at the moment? Hmm, seven grand. And how does that guy like us now? He does not like us. So it, oh, that actually made our people happy. The fact that we failed a quest for him made our percent people 2% happier, but it made him charge us 10% more taxes. Yeah, whatever, don't care. Now, where were we? Oh. Technology-wise, I managed to find a quest out there, a production tech one. It was the new axe. Someone was looking for a new axe. I gave them their axe. They gave us, I think it was 200 production points. So we only have 400 production points more to go. And since it's a new season, I thought I would hit up the quests. I am going to have a quick run to Gustovia, whatever, all of these places that have little exclamation marks in them. And hopefully one of them is either new axe, missing bow, or lavish meal. They're the three quests we're looking for. Ooh. And we actually have three quests in our village right now. Is one of them the wifey? Or yeah, it's the wifey. Hi, well, second Hi, quest in friend. the village. What do you got for us? Uh, I'm so cold. Could you bring me some warm clothes? I can teach you a bit about survival if you do. Um, I'm already going to get clothes, so why not? I'll take that. I mean, our survival skills could use some... I mean, the fact that they don't have warm clothes for winter. 150 survival tech. Yeah, yeah, I'll take it. For our last quest, we got data. Let's see. Uh, I might need your help. What is it? Uh, I was about to go hunting, but still lack some equipment. Oh, this is the missing bow. Yeah, perfect. Uh, uh, the missing bow quest. Time to hunt. Oh, no, this is the wrong one. I thought she was missing the bow. This one's just she wants a stone knife. That's uh, We'll grab her one of those, but damn it, wrong one. This looks absolutely pristine. Once we put, we gravel down so much of the area that it's just a white sheet now. That's amazing. Oh, there is a few pla odd plants coming up. I, I kind of feel like I should get rid of them, but on the other hand, you know, it kind of acts as a warning to the rest of the plants. Don't get too uppity, we might come for you. Anyway, I'm going to run to the nearest village, buy some clothing for that quest, and then see if I can't uh, find some quests in other villages that might give us the last of the survival points we need. Yeah, and that's why I can't wall in over here. This cart thing appeared? And because this cart is here, I can't build roads over it. Just won't let me. Hmm. Unfortunately, I was unable to locate any quests to do with, well, gaining us production tech. So we'll just have to let it finish out. I mean, it seems only fair that the flatbread gets us over the line. Now, I'm just gonna maybe kill some of these birds and have a bit of fun while we're waiting. Ooh, actually, I should probably finish in the road over here. Yeah, this place can be roaded in. This, this should be our final day. This should be it. Technology-wise, we are at 874. Yep, 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 we should definitely finish today in production technology. We could also get around to building technology if we wanted to chop a bunch of trees, but... Eh, resource lit storage level 3. I found a solution to my storage problems. See, I was being silly. I was uh, just expanding out my storage to keep storing all the logs and stuff we were putting in here. Which is why we've got 12 tons of storage space. Then I realized I could just grab, every time I got too many logs, like a thousand logs, I just dumped them over here in the corner. I mean, things don't ever despawn, so just get a big stack of stuff you don't need and chuck it over there. Ooh, actually, how's our iron ore looking? I should probably do something about that. Oh, yeah, that's where a whole bunch of that weight is coming from. Thing is, we have six miners working the iron ore, or working in the mines getting iron ore, and they're kind of getting a little bit out of control. 
You see, the mine supports six people, which means we're getting 123 iron ore a day, which is... It's a lot. It's a lot of iron ore. Uh, actually, what would happen if we just put 10% of that into salt? I'm kind of curious just to see how much that gives us. Oh, wow. Yeah, we have we have a lot of ability to get stuff. Uh, how, how much stone would that give us? Almost, yep, almost enough for a house, which is 10%. We could do multiple houses per day. Copper ore-wise... Yeah, respectable. And tin, quite a lot. Uh, we're just going to leave them on iron ore, though. It produces all of our tools, though we are short a couple of smithies right now. Production-wise, I do want to get two people into this smithy, but currently they're in a workshop making buckets until they get up to level 7. Once they're at level 7, then we'll migrate them over to the smithy. And these two, we're waiting for them to get to level 7 so we can put them into sewing huts. Oh, and our sewing huts are doing quite nicely. I made some adjustments. This thing here produces enough linen thread, linen fabric, wool thread, and wool fabric to make 1.1 joint holes a day, which is worth about 900 bucks. So they're definitely paying for themselves in taxes. In fact, yeah, 12 of those. You know what? This will make a difference. We're going to get three or four of those running, and it should just be a money printer. But for now, for now, I think I'm just going to go chop down 20 trees to finish that quest in the top right. Uh, that should be pretty easy to manage. Where's the nearest trees? Yeah, they're up there. I'll go chop down some of those. Oh, yeah. Time for our daily diet of plum wine and cherry juice. Yep. We we stagger a bit at first, but once you get over the alcohol, it, it's pretty good for chopping down those trees. We just hit resource building level three. I think we just maxed out construction. Uh, let's check. Building technology, 1,002 points. Oh, you can keep going, even if it did. Okay. Cool, we can now do resource storage level 3. Yeah, fine. And we're only less than 40 points shy of production tech. Oh, so close. I'm just well tidying up up here. I don't ever want these trees growing back, so you got to make sure to take them out at the stump. Just to be sure. Wait, new building unlocked apiary? I thought that was a farming tech. Ah, we hit 5,000 farming. It must be all the grinding of flour and stuff. Oh, um, so close, so close. Just just one more tech, come on. The thing is, you do have to go around and collect all these logs. They never despawn. Uh, so I am very concerned what would happen if I just left everything lying around the place. I'm pretty sure it would tank game performance. So you really do have to take these somewhere and store them or at least, you know, compress a thousand logs into one. Otherwise, you're going to start running into problems with performance. That's why I eventually just turned on the infinite storage. Bringing the donkey in and out and having to tra traipse back and forth all the time was just getting on my nerves. At the end of the day, we chopped down the trees. That's all that counts. Uh, one thing I also learned, if you hold a two-handed tool in your hand while you're picking stuff up, it cuts down on the animation time. Just a little bit faster for running around and grabbing the last of those logs that you missed when you were uh, doing all your rapid chopping. Oh, it's done. We've unlocked the tavern. That was the goal, was to unlock the tavern. What age is our character? I mean, we should be able to tell somewhere, right? 23. So we started at 18 and we're now 23. That can't be right. I mean, that's only been five years. Uh, the plan was supposed to take five years and it was going to take a year to spin up and it was a year before we even started, so... Okay, that worked out really well. Okay, I'm going to collect the last of the lumber I left lying around the place. And actually, I think I got it all. Let's go back to the village and build ourselves the tavern we've been waiting for and dreaming for. That is some good render distance. Like, you can see way off into distance. Okay, some things do suddenly get rendered in, like down there at the corner. That wagon hasn't shown up yet. Oh, and this was removed between days. You know what? Not going to worry about it. I'm just going to finish paving in this area right here before we finish up. Namely because all the rest, like these areas here are where there's clay pits or mountains and stuff or rocks in the way that you can't get rid of. So this is the only piece of our highway that needs to be finished. And that should be tavern completed. We've got our own tavern. And the thing about taverns is it's location, location, location. And up here, it is perfectly visible from that village over there. In fact, I'm pretty sure if we do some more cutting on that side, it could be visible to the other village over there. Yeah, that would require a bit of cutting, though. But, you know, could be done. And we're on the biggest road in all of Christendom. Like, this road is just perfect. It's a nice big one. It's got easy access to our village. Uh, Gustovia is right nearby. I mean, 
Ooh, we could probably deforest a bunch over so that you can see Burrow from here. Ooh, might have to get rid of those uh, storage locations. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. What I want to do is figure out how do I craft stuff in this? I want to make some actual plum juice and things like that. The things we've been sculling this whole time to make ourselves super tree killers. Because this was the whole point. We wanted that so we could make all of those. Ooh. And it got access to fish tart. We can make fish tart now. Uh, it takes five water, two flour, two fish meat, and four eggs. Done. Okay, that means we can immediately just go in and start getting people to make that. Right, 9.2 fish tart a day. Perfect. And that's just one of them. We, we, we can't eat all of that. Uh, should we sell it or... Oh, yes, we've also got eggs coming in because a while back I did invest in chickens. We have a whole bunch of them. Um, yeah, it takes one person to run it. They produce the eggs. We have one person working the fishing thing out down there somewhere. We've had them for ages. They've actually been stockpiling so much meat we had to sell it off at times. So we have plenty of... Oh my god, that's a lot of salted meat. We have plenty of salted meat anyway, but we also have lots of fish meat, uh, lots of regular meat, and where's the eggs? 107 eggs, 363 plums, 150 cherries. Ooh, we can get people to automatically make this stuff for us. Nope, 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 I want to make some of it first. I've been looking at this equipment at the, the back of the tavern, and I think I know how it works. This is for making your beers and things. Uh, we don't really care, well... We would want to actually get our hands on some rye beer later because of the the ability to carry more stuff, but we've kind of turned off the carry capacity thing, so not as useful. Uh, my bad. But we got plum juice and we got cherry juice in here. So that means we can make our cherry juice, which we use to give ourselves that bonus to stamina. Uh, cherry juice means we consume 80% less stamina when we're doing anything. It lasts uh, 1,100 seconds and 80% less water consumption. It's perfect. It and it lasts forever, so we don't have to worry about it going off. We can carry several of them on us. It's just super convenient. Food-wise, it's the same as the fish pie. The fish pie does the same... Fish tart does the same thing, but the fish tart goes off an awful lot faster. Oh, then we can also make plum juice as well. And the plum juice is not as useful to us. Plum juice is just... Well, it gives 100% more damage, which is great, but we're going to turn it into plum wine. To turn it into plum wine, you actually just feed the plum juice into this. And... Wait five seconds. And... Bada bing, bada boom. Done. We got ourselves our plum wine. So now we have the ability to craft those. Though, honestly, we have so much money, it, it makes no difference. Actually, what's our money hovering at now? We're at 49 grand, are we? Yeah, 49 grand. Let me just have a quick back, pop back to the... Uh, this, actually, any storage location. There's several. Which one's closer? You know what? Let's just go over here. There should be a bunch of coins in there from all of the uh, selling of bread we've been doing. Oh. Yeah, there's 19 grand worth of coins in there. Perfect. I think we're good on the money front. In fact, I think we've won. I'm going to call this a win right now. <laughs> the thing is, it's like, okay, uh, this game is interesting, but there's a few oh, quirks to it, I want to say. For example, the, the game really sets you up to go, okay, you're going to have to grind your way up. But you don't, realistically. I mean, technology-wise, it takes you forever to unlock a bunch of things that you would really like to get but you can buy all those things. You want a recurve bow? Go to the shop. Kill some boars with a spear or two, then take the meat, cook it up. That'll give you production technology. At the same time, you can sell it for more money. Take the leather, turn it into bags that you can sell. After a while, you make enough money to easily afford a recurve bow or just take up enough to get a sewing hut and start making simple bags, and that'll make you so much cash you'll be swimming in it. So money-wise, you can just buy all the equipment you need, the backpacks, the clothing, all of that stuff. And after that, it's... I'm not really sure what the point is. I mean, it's more of a, a sim where you do what you want. You pick a goal, no matter how stupid or smart, and then you go for that one. So I kind of see where they were going, but with gazing this stuff really far behind technology-wise on the base difficulty, I mean, I know where you can adjust it. There's all sorts of customizable sliders in here. There is, like, building limits. I doubled it because, well, we were actually running out of buildings. You can increase your taxes, XP gain, technology gain, all this stuff. Hmm, I should probably do a little bit of review, but I think the main takeaway for me was farming sucks. Farming is just the worst. Of all the ways to make technology, production, food, all that stuff, farming is just, no, don't do it. The reason being, you can, well, okay, there's multiple reasons, but let's just say food. If you want food, don't use farms. Hunting lodge, hunting lodge level two, and then next thing you know, you're pulling in 54 meat and you're so able to salt it all instantly. It costs one salt to salt 10 meat, so this consumes whatever, six, 6.9 salt a turn. 
That's fine. If you want salt, you just need an extraction shed. Extraction shed can handle... Oh, no one's damaged. Say this one here. Let's just take off 10% from limestone. Oh. You can't get salt here. Never mind, you have to hold out for the mine. Okay, that changes my math slightly. But as you can see here, 10% of the time spent in a mine doing salt gives you 175 salt. Yeah, let's see, let's just put it down to 1%. Even 1% of your mining time in a mine gives it... Yeah, that's... Run into a mine once, mine is out for salt, you'll have enough salt to keep you going in food for several years. Using hunter's huts and salt, just boom. And even then, you could get away with just feeding them raw meat and it's fine. Planting stuff is just such an added complication. Uh, for the hunter's hut, all you need is a knife. That's it, a knife and you're done. For this, you are going to need a hoe. You're going to need fertilizer. Are you going to run pigs for your fertilizer or are you going to run cabbage? If you run cabbage, that's just more farming you have to do with another hoe. Uh, you also have to use bags. Are you going to use leather bags? Leather bags fall apart really quickly. If you're using leather bags, that means you've got a hunter's hut to get you the leather, which means why not just get the food anyway that way? It's just more efficient. Uh, these orchards. Wow. Uh, they take forever to level up. As in, they take a couple of years before... Right, you. They take uh, they take a few years to level up, and even when you do get them, you still won't have unlocked the technology to actually utilize them. I've just unlocked the technology, and I specialized super hard to get that open in the first five years. So you cannot use any of the orchards to make anything until you max out your production tech, which is one of the harder techs to max out. Uh, two, do not use flatbread to grind up your production technology. It's pointless. You are far better off going with the clay route, going with clay and the clay jug. This is just, all you need is an excavation hut producing the clay, a workshop producing the jugs, and boom, you'll you'll smash out the resources required. It just requires a one-to-one -one ratio. One guy making jugs, one guy digging it out of the ground. The jug guy will probably gain the experience a little bit faster, but you don't care. All you need to do is feed them, and they will just grind you out the experience. The clay jugs will be a bit heavy to shift, but, well, I mean, to carry to actually sell them off. But once you get access to the, uh, the little hut that allows you to sell them, that one there in the corner, it's a lot easier to move them that way. But yeah, clay is just so much simpler. Clay, clay and jugs, done. This whole farming thing was an interesting experiment, but I don't like it. Also, when it comes to clothing, uh, a lot of people like flax as well, because flax can be used to make a lot of bags and things like that. Uh, I'd, I'd almost do one field of flax, but that'd be about it. That's about the only thing I'd be willing to work planting. And even then, if you do plant flax, then you have to get pigs, or you have to start getting some other way of getting fertilizer. It's just a pain in the... It's just annoying. It really is. Farming is, yep, the worst. Maybe just stick entirely with wool. Is there anything you can make out of just wool? Actually, there is. You could just make hoods. Hoods only require wool fabric, which means you just need to get a, a sheep pen, put in 10 sheep, and then you can churn these out. They won't be as cost-efficient as, say, your joined hoses, but simplifies the production chain. One person can just... You can really granularly do some wonderful things here. Like, this, to me, is a thing of beauty, because this person is producing the... The entire joint hose. This requires two wool fabric, one linen fabric, and one linen thread. And you will notice they are producing the two wool fabric. They are producing the one linen thread. Uh, in fact, they're producing two linen, three linen thread. One of it's getting turned into linen fabric, a little bit extra actually. And they're also producing the wool thread. They're producing everything that's necessary to go into actually making this piece of equipment. And that's just excellent. It allows you to really just granularly get things done. I do quite like that feature. Instead of just having one specialised in making thread, one specialised in one in making fabric, no, nope, you just average it out across someone. I've done the same thing with the smithy. This smith is producing a, a little smorgasbord of everything, iron axes, hammers, knives, hoes, pickaxes, the whole nine yards. And as they get better, they'll produce more and more. Uh, what's their level at the moment? They're only level, ooh, level four, level three. Well, no, it's okay. I got two people in training at the moment and they're already at level five and they would, oh yes, buckets. Oh my God, buckets are so good. Buckets level people up faster than anything else when it comes to production technology. True. And all you have to do to get it running is woodsheds. Woodsheds produce the planks. So it's just like simple things. You only need people. You don't need anyone walking through fields. You don't need any farming stuff. Just food and water is all your people need. Easy peasy. So I suppose, end of the day, did I like the game? Yes. It's enjoyable, but uh, it's very grindy. That's the thing, I don't think a lot of people would like the grind. Me, personally, it was like, yeah, I had a bit of fun chopping down some trees while I was waiting. My advice would be, uh, avoid farming like the plague, stick to every, get your food out of the hunter's hut, and then what you can do later on in the game is change the length of the seasons. You can drop the length of the seasons down to one day. Now, this is settings will only be applied after the next season passes, but that means you'd only have one day seasons 
time will pass a lot faster. You'll actually age up your heir. Like we have, we have an heir right now who is what age? Three. They're three years of age. At 18, they take over from you. So if you want that to happen in a time frame where you're not, you know, dead of boredom. I mean, this, this is what I've managed to do in the first five years of the game is, is wallpaper for that. If I have to wait until my heir ages up, I'm pretty sure I could road most of the map. You could just turn the entire place into a road for no other reason than, you know, because. Also, you'd get rid of all the trees. Might take a while. That took many, many hours. Still totally worth it. Huh. They actually come and sit out in, in our inn. I should probably make one closer by. You know what? Nah, who cares? It'll be fine. This place has the best view in the valley. There, that's it. That is the perfect way to end it. Looking out over that perfect pristine valley with none of those... Like, look at all that annoying, you know, hedge and brush and dirt and stones and all sorts of stick and sticks. Nope. Perfectly pristine and clean as far as the eye can see. Well, as far as the next bank. That's just exactly the way it wants to be. Oh, we get to name the tavern, so I called it the Danger Zone. Because it's on the highway, it has to be the Danger Zone. I figured that was the best thing. I mean, realistically, it's more of a highway to the Bread Zone, but that's not, just not quite so catchy, you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. This was Medieval Dynasty. I hope you enjoyed, and good luck.